What's up? Good morning, guys. How are you? Alex here from Oppos again with another video for you guys. As you can tell, I'm walking a half a mile to the truck. We're on our way to work right now. Um, just gotta get the truck opened up and started. And then we'll head over. So guys, we got a busy day. We just got here right now. Uh, we got tons of stuff to do. Orders are just literally coming out of the yin yang right now. Um, we got the guys up front working on all that right now. In the meantime, 59 is supposed to be coming sometime today. Uh, we just got rid of the other 59 four door. Now we got two door hardtop 59 coming in. And on top of that, yesterday we had like three metal deliveries. This morning we woke or showed up to another one that's sitting back there. Um, so we got tons of stuff to cut. We got about four Z racks we're building right now. And we got tons and tons of frame plates we gotta cut up soon. Um, so we're working on it. That and uh, rear, end, rear end reinforcements. We got a ton of those in the works as well. Also guys, uh, stay tuned. Black Friday sale coming very, very soon. We are working on that right now. We actually just had a meeting on that, just figuring out what exactly is gonna be going up into that Black Friday sale. Um, and there's gonna be some good stuff up there. So you guys hang in there. Hey, mijo. Everyone was missing you last night on YouTube, man. What happened? What happened? Two words, guys. Hey, come on. Just talk to them. They've been missing you. What do you want me to say? <laughs> just, just tell them how your day is. More than two words. My day's going great. Thank All right. you for asking. Why you gotta always pick on me? Ah, uh, see, there we go. Cam he thought the camera was off, so he started talking shit. <laughs> see, guys? Just another day here at work, right, Vic? Just another lovely day with each other. Can't complain. Here. Just a lovely day with each other. Seriously. I don't know what I would do without this guy. Serious note, though. Don't know what I'd do without that guy. Um, but yeah, right now we got tons of material being cut up. Still waiting on the 59. Hasn't showed up yet. Hopefully it shows up. If not, boom, next one in line is coming in. Um, show you what show you what we're working on right now. We got Z rack material being cut up. That's what Vic's programming over here. He also got Y bone material being cut up. Got Y bones, Z racks. Man, again, a bad glare right here. Jeez. Vic likes this machine because he just stands back and watch. Look, it does everything by itself. 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 50, 60. Really? We got enough here for 16. Yeah, yeah, keep staring at that pipe. It might scorch you in the face. Be careful. We got enough here for almost 16 stages on a Z rack. Now, are we doing 16 stages or are we doing four tilt beds? Who knows? You guys are going to have to wait to see, I guess. I right, got a quick update for you guys. So we got stage threes done for all four racks. We got stage twos done back there and stage ones. And we also got all the hinges. Actually, this is the, the main solid pin. So we go solid hinge all the way across. And on the saw in the back right now, way back there, we got all the outer section of the hinges. And we do solid and we do them all the way across the back. Like this. That way you don't have any type of flex going on or any type of issues. And 59 still hasn't showed up. I don't know if he's supposed to show up. He was supposed to be here, but it's not here yet. So hopefully it shows up before 5.30. If not, uh, I guess I'm gonna bump in the next car. All right guys, so one of the Impalas finally showed up right now. Uh, we still haven't got the 59. Don't know what happened there. And that's why a lot of people, you know, always say oh just schedule cars in and, you know it sounds really easy but they just don't show up sometimes so we got this one in right now gonna do some major repairs on keep you guys updated guys as you guys see the 59 still hasn't showed up but it's okay because we got the 64 in here and we got a lot of things going on actually let me go grab them real quick we were gonna be installing what everybody calls high lockup ball joints which obviously, if you guys know on our website, we do not sell them as high lockup ball joints. We sell them as a heavy duty ball joint. Now, in this case, Mario, the customer, 
he is okay with us telling him that it's not safe to run these, but he wants to run them anyways. He understands the liability of putting all that stress on a single bolt. Uh, luckily, we did upgrade him on a bolt. We actually went stronger than a grade eight, which most of them are supplied with, which most people put in there. Um, this is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the L9, uh, which was uh, comparable to the, if I'm not, I think it was the FJ or the, the F911s, uh, which is a stronger bolt than the grade eight, which was most uh, like off-road sand buggies and stuff run on their vehicle. So we did put those bolts on here. Um, he just got these back from Powder Coat and from Chrome. So we're gonna be installing these and show you guys how to do them. So let's get to it. What we're also gonna do right now is we're gonna get a base reading on measurement. Um, that way you guys can see the difference. Obviously it's gonna be very noticeable, but that way we can give you exact measurement on how much it changed. Right now he's reading right around 29 inches on here. This is gonna be backwards because my screen is reversed. I'm sorry, it's the only way I do this. It's just easier for me to keep track of. Um, but yeah, so right now base measurement's right around 29 inches. So we're gonna be modifying the front arms, we're gonna be taking out the sock ball joints, and we're gonna be putting in our heavy duty ball joints with his okay to put the extension on it. And uh, again, when I say that, I'm stressing that because he understands that him putting a longer spacer between the ball joint and the spindle does increase his risk of breaking that front ball joint because of the side load it's going to put on there. Luckily for the uniball and the heavy duty ball joint, it does give him more articulation so it's less, less chances of it um, binding up, but he does run the risk of it bending and breaking. Um, and the customer is very well aware of it and he is okay with us proceeding forward and doing this. So now I'm gonna say here, the reason we do not sell these as a high lockup ball joint is because they were never intended to be extended out four or five inches like I've seen some of these people doing. They were uh, meant to create a heavier ball joint when the unbreakable blue boots started disappearing. When the blue boot uh, unbreakables kept getting bought out, um, they pretty much started downgrading the quality of them. It's got bought out multiple times in the last few years, which a lot of you guys that have been in the industry, you guys, know the blue boot as the unbreakable ball joint. Obviously we all know that everything is breakable and there's no such thing as unbreakable. But because of that was a street name of it, it kind of just stuck and a lot of people mistakenly thought that those things are indestructible, which obviously they're not. Um, especially when we're running such high amount of PSI and uh, battery power to it, they can break and anything can break. And um, so when that started happening, they started disappearing. We started going in and we started making the heavy duty ball joint. I'm doing this because we do not call them high lockups. We call them heavy duty HD ball joints. And because we normally don't want customers extending them further than their limits. And while even though Mario was okay with us putting a stock ball joint, he didn't want the look. So he did give us the consent and the okay to extend them further. And he does understand the risk that he takes, but he is all right with it. So we are gonna proceed forward and we're gonna show you. Again, base measurement was 29 inches off the tape measure from the bottom on the floor to his fender well. So we're gonna do a final measurement once we do a lock up on it. So we got the car up right now. Next step here, after the wheels off, remove the cotter pin. Pressure has already been released off the front cylinders, so there is no pressure. Oil, cylinder, everything is technically loose now. Um, so we're gonna just remove the car pin, get this broken apart real quick, and move forward. Out. We'll put some new ones in. So 
before you guys have seen me use the use the the double hammer on here on the spindle because it's all chrome and engraved. I really don't like using the pickle fork, but we're gonna be using the pickle fork in this case and instead of coming in from the front side, we're coming from the back side. So if it does hit the arm, it's gonna hit the inside and not gonna scar anything up that's visible. Luckily that came off really easy. I went ahead and put a stand under here so I can release the, the arm. Again, there's no tension under it right now, so we're good. I know a lot of you guys are also going to be like, dude, why are you wearing your welding apron and a welding jacket? Well, it's been like 92 degrees this whole week, all the way in this winter or fall, whatever we're in. And today it's pouring rain, and when I woke up this morning it was like 42 degrees, which I know a lot of you guys are going to say that's cold, but for Californians, where I, I literally got a tank top on underneath this and I got shorts on up here, it's freezing for us. So... That's why I got my welding jacket on. That's why I got my apron. Luckily, I found this in my truck. It was keeping my neck warm, so I know I look like an idiot, but I'm warm. So, and also the noisy, the roaring noise you hear in the background. I actually got a heater on going on, going on over there on the backside, and the door closed. Yes, Californians are picky. We do not like cold. I like 90 degrees tank top, shorts, and flip flops. So, that's why I'm wearing this. I forgot my jacket. Honestly, we're not going to use them again. We're going to upgrade them and put some nice stuff in here. Not that it wasn't nice, but I mean, they've been in here for a while, so might as well get some new, fresh nuts and bolts in there. Who doesn't like fresh nuts, right? And surprisingly, for as much as he drives this car, the ball joints are actually in great shape. Could use a little bit of grease, but they're actually in really good condition. So when they reinforce it, they actually reinforce here, which is a great thing. But for us, it makes it harder because we actually got to open these this hole up here to get the ball joint in. So it's, uh, we're going to be fighting through almost uh, almost three eighths thick material, um, and I'm going to have to ream it out. So that's going to be some fun part. Uh, we'll probably have to time lapse this or just fast forward. It. Thank God you guys are. Watching. In the last video, you guys are all so, so concerned about my safety and my eyes. Look what I got. A fresh new pair of stylish safety glasses. I can't wait, wait to use them. All right, let's get these stickers off. Oh, look at it. Anti-fog coated. See how well these things work out. Now I'm going to tell you a little backstory. I got slanted eyes. So I always make that a joke that us Asians or Pacific Islanders came built in with safety glasses. But every time I wear safety glasses, I get something in my eye. I, I kind of feel like it's more because my eyes are, I feel protected so I, I open them more. When I don't wear them, I never get anything in my eye. My two doctor visits I had to do to remove the metal out of my eye was while I was wearing safety glasses. Now, I know a lot of you guys aren't gonna believe that. That is why you guys will never see me really wearing safety glasses in a lot of my videos. I know it's against rules and stuff like that, but every time I wear them, it's costing me $300 because I had to get something out of my eye. Now, I don't know if it's just my bad luck or any of you guys have ever experienced that, but every time I wear them, I get something in my eye. When I don't wear them, I'm perfectly fine. And I'm going to say this is probably about 9, 10 years worth of continuous everyday work. So, wish me luck. Uh, oh, I think 
got something in my eye, guys. Nah, I'm just fucking around. <laughs> this I'm actually using a carbite uh, reaming bit and the reason I'm doing that is because there's already a hole there it's not like I go in there and put a hole saw in there now I could go and make an adapter plate to bolt it into the into the ball joint you know weld that up and you know make a center hole for a, a hole saw at that point I'm gonna be done already by you know with one side so it's not even worth it I can also use uh, the round grinding wheels uh, the ones that are sideways a little flat disc, but the bad part those are like four or five bucks a piece and they don't last very long um, I probably honestly burn through Probably 10 to 15 of them trying to use it and it just takes forever It doesn't take a lot of material away. They don't last very long So the best bet for long-term use is gonna be a carbide tip um, And I'm using this and I'm just going around in a in real soft circle. I'm not really putting much pressure I'm letting the, the tool do the work itself and it pretty it evenly takes out a good amount of material at a time. It puts out some really sharp chunks. Um, so I just gotta sit there and be patient, take a little out of way at a time, test fit, until we get it perfect. Once we fit, get a nice tight fit in there, we'll drop the ball joint in and drill the correct holes out for it. As you guys can see too, I got a few turns through it and I realized I should have just take the whole arm off so what I'm doing is I'm rubbing my glove on the arm and I didn't want to see any scroll, uh, swirl marks from the little chips that are coming off. So I ended up taking the whole arm off. I also taped up my wrist because these little shavings are really, really sharp. So I taped it up so that way I didn't get nothing in my sleeves. And luckily I do have you know full apron, which is working out right now because it's not getting inside my shirt and my pants and stuff like that. This stuff is really, really razor sharp, uh, especially with the carbide tip. So. It was just safer to tape everything off. I'm also gonna probably go ahead and tape off the caliper and his knockoff, that way I don't get any issues with it or take the knockoff off, one of the two. Uh, I just don't like any anti seize all over me and I always end up with a circle on my stomach. So I'll probably just tape everything off, that way nothing gets scratched up. So 17 and a half days later, we have reamed the hole. We got touchdown. So as you guys can see, we got ball joint in place. Fits in there nice and good. So the only issue with this is, I don't know if you guys can see that, it's a four bolt. And I uh, asked Mario if it was a three bolt or a full bolt, three or four bolt, and he had said he had converted it to a four, but he probably forgot which car he had converted it on. And well, it wasn't this one. And unfortunately with the arm being chromed, there's not much I can do. Normally I would weld these in grind them smooth, make it look like it was never there, and then redrill my holes. Because the arm is already chrome and engraved, I'm gonna have to make this work. Um, I'm probably gonna give Mario a call and see what he wants to do, but it has been opened up and cleaned up and it drops in there now. It's pretty good, it has, yeah, it's, it fits real good now. So, got one side done. I'm gonna give Mario a call, see what he wants to do on this. Um, thank God I got this all covered up though. If you guys see those shavings Yeah, I don't want to scratch up the arm so luckily it's all taped up now So guys, I just got off the phone with Mario right now um, So you know how I was telling you guys how he told me it was a four hole, but the car was actually still original three hole So what he's gonna do is we're just gonna or he's gonna eat this set of ball joints here and we're just gonna create him a whole new set. We're gonna make it for the three bolt, which we do already offer. Um, but we're gonna get those and then, I got tools falling over here. And then from there, he's gonna go ahead and get them painted or powder coated, whatever he's gonna do with them. He's gonna bring them back. He's telling me about a one day turnaround, hopefully. So I just gotta get these made up for him real quick and then I'm gonna send them out or he's gonna send a driver out here to pick them up. And then this video is gonna go on hold for a day, which obviously you guys won't know, but it's gonna go on hold which I hate doing two-day videos, but it's gonna happen. So, stand still. So guys, we're just waiting on ball joints. Wishbone's all done in the rear. Take you back there real quick. Uh, we got wishbone done, we got the brake lines uh, just fixed. One was cracked back there, so we fixed it up for him. So we eliminated all his banana bar, panhard bar, um, well, actually, sorry, he didn't have a panhard bar because he had a banana bar or a white bone on here. Sorry, geez. 
long day already. So we eliminated that. We had some issues with uh, one of the brackets bending on the stock stuff. So we eliminated all that, welded in all the new stuff. I know some of this is engraved and we did have to grind it all off. Uh, but he's going to do his touch-ups on there and he's going to fix it all up and uh, blend it in with paint. Probably add some patterns and stuff in there or however he's going to do it. But um, our job was to get the wishbone in, get all the new brackets in place. That's what we did. And now it just needs a good clean up on the bottom side to get it back to what it used to be. But other than that, the front's been waiting for the ball joints. That one day turnaround did not happen, which I expected. But it's okay. It's still hopefully set by today. Um, this video's already gone to about two, three days, I think it's been. Um, wishbone's done. I didn't do a, wish, a video on the wishbone because we already have a video on the wishbone. So that's done. Now the car's just sitting. Just waiting for the next step and hopefully the next step will be finalizing those wishbone or those wab. Well, I cannot talk today. Jeez, it's Monday. That's why. Hopefully the final step will be finalizing the ball joints. Jeez, there we go. I'm not even going to edit that out just because I, yeah, that's just how it is. It's Monday. So the ball joints finally showed up, thank God. So we start this side. Vic's working on the other side right now as we speak. Just getting the ball joint in place. Um, lock washer, nylon, or uh, nut. That chrome didn't last very long on those bolts. Gonna swap out. Got the new bolts right here. Um, the chrome literally just peeled right off of these bolts. So we're not gonna use them. These are scrapped now. Uh, we didn't we didn't have these chrome. The customer had them chromed, but uh, yeah, that chrome just peeled right off of those bolts. So even though he's not getting chrome bolts, at least we know we were giving him good bolts on here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do that right now. All right, so let's do this again with uh, a good bolt. Can't cuss on YouTube. As Vic is looking for the correct tool because he says I can't. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so you would have been done already if you just used a big old crescent that I already had. So we finished the rear off um, in between waiting for the ball joints to get painted. Uh, it took about a day, actually two days, to get these ball joints painted from uh, the customer.
Tell him, Vic. Oh, see? It's yeah. tight, huh? Beautiful. It's tight, huh? I wasn't tight until you used the right tool. Oh, okay. Yeah. They didn't teach you nothing in uh, TTI or what's that called? Uh, ETA? Hey, no, TTI. ETI? ETI or what's, what's it called? Uh, Mechanical Engineering Tool. Mechanical Engineering Tool. Yeah. Mechanical Engineering Tool. Yeah. I didn't go to UTI because they don't teach you crap at UTI. They don't even t they, the only thing they teach you at UTI how to put air on the, on the tires is how to use a jack and how to put air in tire, how to tighten a spark plug, which is pointless for what we do here. And if you don't know how to do that anyways, you shouldn't be working on cars. There you guys go. That's installed. That is... Uh, Actually, you know, we should measure them. Let me see where they're sitting at. Because I believe they were 29 before. So you can see the nice drop towards the back. You see, we're about 31. Let's see, about 31 and... Kind of hard to tell because it's black, but... 31 and a quarter. So it made a difference to see 29, 30, 31. So about two and a quarter inches taller. There's a space you can see right there. Now he does have room to add more. That's his choice. Again, that's as far as we're gonna go. It's about uh, two and a quarter inches taller than what it was before. As you see, we just did the full install on the high lockup ball joints. High lockup, which we don't call them high lockups. We call them HD ball joints, but you guys did see how we did it. And that was the whole general idea on it. We are closing up right now. We got Vic closing oh, My big head's blocking it. We got Vic closing up right now. Pretty much gonna call it a night. Um, just gonna keep moving forward. Next job in. I also just got a whole bunch of stuff in for some personal builds. C4 lighting, and it's, uh, it's considered an off-road rock light. So these will be pretty cool. I just ordered 20 of them. Uh, the guys took care of me up there at C4. So now time to get them installed right before I head up there for the show. So you guys know what to do. If you guys aren't subscribed, make sure you guys subscribe. If you guys haven't liked the video, make sure you guys like it. Um, and we are having that Black Friday sale. So be sure to head to the website, www.hoppersonline.com, and uh, check out all the different pricing we have on there. And pretty much the way we did this one different than last time is. Can you not get hurt, please? We're trying to go home. Okay. OSHA approved. Yeah, since everyone's, you know, OSHA certified on, on YouTube nowadays, you got. Oh, put your seatbelt on. Make sure you put your seatbelt on. Yep, there we go. Put your seatbelt on. Because everyone on YouTube is going to cry and complain. Yep, there you go. You check your surroundings, you're good. All right, check your mirrors, you're good. Oh, and lights, it, it is beyond dusk, so your lights, there we go. We don't want the YouTube OSHA police to cry and complain, so. Guys, seriously, you know what? My mama once told me, if I don't have nothing nice to say, I'm not gonna say it, so I'm gonna leave it at that. You guys have a great night, www.hoppersonline.com and make sure you guys check out our Black Friday sale. You guys have a great night.